successful IFRT 2020-20 and uh, we're starting with my topic that is wearable artificial kidney devices. I will be discussing this topic under the headlines of uh, brief introduction of the kidney diseases and brief history of hemodialysis followed by wearable artificial kidney, then wearable artificial kidney in the form of peritoneal dialysis, then uh, implantable by artificial kidneys and the regenerative cell uh, systems. As we all know that kidney diseases are the major health issues in the world and it affects around 10% of the world population. Incidence and prevalence of kidney diseases varies worldwide, whereas its prevalence in India is around 17% and uh, the modalities of renal replacement therapies that we use are hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis and, renal, uh, and kidney transplantation. Around 94% of the uh, patients in India are on hemodialysis, whereas 6% on, on peritoneal dialysis. And those who undergo renal transplantation, only 30% are on functioning, kid functioning kid transplanted kidneys. Uh, around 60% of the patient discontinues RRT due to lack of affordability and access to care. In India, according to the 2018 census, around 1,75 patients were on maintenance hemodialysis that gives prevalence of 129 per million population. If there are many inequalities in access to dialysis, according to the million death study collaborator, almost 60% of the patient travel for more than 50 kilometers to access HD and more than 25% travel for more than 100 kilometers. The burden of travel increases the cost and decreases the uh, wages for the patient. As I discussed that uh, according to the Indian perspective, uh, Total 1,175 like <coughs> uh, According to 2018 census, there were 1,75 patients on the dialysis and every year seems like 10,000 patients are uh, developing kidney failure. Coming to the uh, history of dialysis, the, uh, we have achieved some milestones in RRT so far. The first dialysis description was published in 1913 by Abel Rowntree and Turner, who dialyzed the anesthetized animals by directing their blood outside the body through tubes of semi permeable membranes made from collodion, which was a cellulose, and that dialysis treatment principle continues to be used in today's dialysis machines. Abel and his colleagues used irudine as a Antiquadrant. <coughs> was uh, in 1943 when Dr. William Cole introduced the rotating drum dialyzer. It was during the World War II when It was during World War II when uh, Dr. William Cole developed the first efficient dialyzer for human use. In this, in this blood passes from cannulated artery driven by the patient's artery pressure to a cellophane tube spiral wrapped around the drum. As the drum rotated, the blood was forced along the membrane by gravity and the column of blood was immersed in a tank of dialysis. A pump returned the blood to vein after it passed through an air trap and clot system. The principle of ultrafiltration was introduced. Then uh, after many uh, changes and improvements, continuously there were uh, many uh, developments. Another milestone was achieved in 1964 and we developed the hollow, first hollow fiber dialyzer. Now we use a synthetic polysulfate with good uh, filtering efficiency and tolerability. Today's dialysis machines, they are efficient, monitoring and data management systems have become more user friendly. Even we are using computer controlled online technologies, networking and spatial software. Uh, some limitations of existing RRT are they are heavy and non-portable, removes only fraction 
of the uremic toxin and only 50% of the patients survive first uh, three years after the initiation of dialysis. In peritoneal dialysis, there is always a risk of peritonitis and the damage of peritoneal membrane is uh, there because of the glucose concentration. And for the transplantation, demand supply mismatch is always there and uh, cost of surgery and post-transplant medication is always the issue. Issue with conventional HD is that uh, it uh, clears on uh, mostly the low molecular weight toxins and conventional HD as well as PD therapies are water voracious. Uh, typical HD treatment uses almost 1 ventilator of water for 4 hour treatment. Water treatment units are expensive, high maintenance and uh, not eco-friendly. They contribute to majority of bio waste. Each session generating around 1 to 2 kg of the bio waste. PD patients also use 8 to 12 liters of pre manufactured dialysis fluid every day. Freedom of uh, less freedom and low quality of life, restrictions over food habit, and burden of supplementary medications is there. Which leads to the consequences of malnutrition, inflammation, atherosclerosis, amyloidosis, and cardiovascular mortality. So we are still in search of an ideal form of RRT which should mimic the complex structure and function of the human kidney while maintaining the quality of life. So coming to the venerable artificial kidney, it has been a honey grain in kidney failure for decades. For over the past 20 years, Dr. Victor Gura, who is MD internist and nephrologist working on the bar, he is a member of Seda Senai Medical Center. Uh, it has been through multiple iterations from prototype 1.4 which was weighted over 90 kgs, then prototype 2.0, which was weighted 4.5 kgs and was tested in clinical trials. Latest version that was was uh, 3.0, which is weighted just 1 kg. It is powered by rechargeable battery and patented by USFG recently in 2020. Uh, the variable artificial kidney, this is prototype 2.0, which, which, uh, which can be worn uh, as a bed. The principles of uh, variable artificial kidney are dependent on two systems. That is, uh, we all know the recirculating dialysate radio system, which was uh, introduced in 1966 by Malcolm Roberts. It was successfully it has successfully performed more than six million dialysis treatments from 1973 to 94. Uh, the major advantage being it was uh, portable, around 20 kg. But manufacture of radio system was discontinued in 1994 because of its high cost. Inferior treatment adequacy as compared to fixed sugar osmosis generated dialysate, aluminium induced toxicities, release of sodium in exchange of cations, which has led to high interdiabetic weight gain, excessive ammonium production required large amount of zirconium phosphate to remove it, and removal of calcium magnesium required replenishment via separate reservoir. So, another principle that has used in work is nano dialysis. Variable disasters learn from the principle of nanodialysis, which involves miniaturization and uses solvent for continuous regeneration of dialysis. Only 100 to 300 ml of dialysate will be needed, and the solvent system will allow for a variable system. So, the first technical breakthrough in, uh, uh, in variable artificial kidney uh, they got in 2008. Uh, in their first trial, which was conducted in pig with kidney failure, they demonstrated that urea clearance was 37 uh, plus minus 7.3 ml per minute, creatinine clearance of 27 plus minus 4 ml per minute, and hourly KT by V of 0 0.045 plus minus 0 0.202. Uh, this is the uh, visual abstract that uh, showing by increasing the pH dialyzer to 7.4 that, that it has helped to increase the adsorption of ammonia. With the pulsatile blood flow and dialyzer flow, it has increased the clearances, uh, which, uh, in, which used only 375 ml of dialyzer uh, using the sorbet system to regenerate the dialyzer. Uh, beta 2 microglobulin was effectively removed by activated charcoal sorbent and it has given effective clearance of creatinine clearance of 27 ml per minute. But still some questions were unanswered that was what will be the cost? Can a bag be worn by humans over prolonged and continuous period? And will it be uh, clearly improve the outcome in patients of ESRD? 
So the US FDA, FDA trial was done in 2014-15 from uh, November 2014 to April 2015 and it was published in 2016. Uh, on uh, number of subjects recruited were 10 and from the OPD uh, dialysis facility. Inclusion criteria of age more than 21 years Mental, on mental health hemodialysis we sleep for 3 months prior to enrollment. Weight of 45 to 100 kg. Muscular access to functioning double limb and dialysis type. Exclusion criteria of anticipated living related kidney donor transplant within 2 months. History of recent cardiovascular events or hemodynamic instability or active infection. For the treatment period, all subjects were admitted to an inpatient hospital unit. Prior to initiation of 24 hour treatment with VAC, each subject received a 4 hour conventional hemodialysis according to the subject's routine clinical prescription. Following a 2 hour treatment free transition period, subjects were connected to the VAC and they have used heparin as an antibody. In result, during study period, the mean blood flow was 42 plus minus 24 ml per minute, dialysis flow was 43 plus minus 20 ml per minute. With moderate decrease in dialysis uh, blood flow between 16 to 24 hours. Mean weighted average concentration of blood urine and nitrogen significantly lower during the 24 hour treatment relative to average concentration from 48 hour prior period before the war. It was 17 plus minus 5 mg per DL versus 10 uh, plus minus 18 mg per DL, which was significantly uh, low. Mean beta 2 microglobulin concentration significantly low during VAR treatment relative to the periods of conventional dialysis that was 17 plus minus 8 milligram per liter versus 22 plus minus 11 milligram per liter, which is significant. And mean blood urea, blood urea nitrogen, creatinine, and phosphorus clearances during the study were 17 plus minus 10, 16 plus 18 plus minus 8, and 15 plus minus 9 ml per minute respectively. Mean beta 2 microglobulin clearance was 5 plus minus 4 ml per minute. This is the uh, schematic and pictorial diagram of a variable artificial kidney, which will be having a uh, inflow from the patient with heparin reservoir and pump, batteries which, were, which are rechargeable, and dialyzer, and a uh, regenerating dialyzer system that are sorted, and, uh, and a fluid collection plant. This is another schematic diagram which will be showing that the battery power pumps run and dialyze it, uh, run and dialyze it using the push and pull pulses to a hollow fiber dialyzer. The flow is such that when the dialyzer uh, flow, when the blood flow is at peak, the dialyzer flow will be less and it will be vice versa. This innovative pulsar type pull and push mechanism will allow for the uh, low blood flows in the range of 50 to 100 ml per day. Uh, according to the results, the device functioning and technical issues uh, as per the expectation, dialysis regenerative solvents performed well with no evidence of saturation with uremic solids. But some technical issues were there. Uh, the removal of gas bubble was done in three patients. Clotting of septic was occurred in one patient. Pink discoloration of dialysis occurred in one patient, but there was no evidence of no dialysis. Elevated ammonia levels were there in one patient and battery had to change in two patients. Adverse event and tolerability for the patients, uh, there were no uh, serious or serious adverse event. Only two subjects had experienced mild uh, gravity and one had nausea at the end of treatment. Uh, they have uh, they have calculated treatment satisfaction and health related quality of life which was significantly uh, great with the VAR treatment and uh, they have calculated the renal treatment satisfaction questionnaire in uh, 13 domain, uh, 10 out of 13 domains the work was superior. This was the renal treatment satisfaction questionnaire. Uh, which was showing the total treatment satisfaction score uh, conven for conventional hemodialysis it was 46 and for VAC it was 70. The individual uh, items scale from 0 to 6. 0 was the lowest satisfaction and 6 was the highest satisfaction. So, uh, 
through the uh, miniaturization of dialysis is achieved potentially patient freedom, autonomy, better quality of life, and improved overall, overall clinical outcomes. But still, it will have some disadvantages that will be immunological activation due to continuous blood artificial membrane interaction, enzymatic degradation of urea by UVS produces carbon dioxide bubbles, which can impede the dialysis flow, clotting of the venous catheter due to slow blood flow rate. Disconnection from the bloodstream with potential for significant blood, blood loss. Sorbent used as dialysis regeneration needs treatment replacement. That will portion the actual fair, uh, limit of therapy. Coming to another variable system that is variable peritoneal dialysis system. The first uh, variable uh, peritoneal dialysis system was uh, invented by uh, Claudio Rongo and Lucio Secondini. It was known as YVAC CD. It was a prototype of peritoneal dialysis device. Uh, consists of double human peritoneal catheter, dialyzed inflow miniaturized rotate tree form circuit for dialyzed regeneration, filter for deaeration and microvalence testing, and dialyzed outflow line and a farm computer and a, as a remote control. This is a schematic diagram showing the uh, double human catheter, the solar and pump batteries and uh, sorbent as, as a cartridge. Functioning principle of the uh, our, uh, variable kidney, uh, variable peritoneal uh, device will be first it will, will be installing of the 1 to 1.5 liter of dialyzed into peritoneal cavity that will absorb the toxins, waste products and extra fluids through the peritoneal membrane. Initial 500 ml is drained from the peritoneum into storage unit of the skin and it will undergo regeneration into storage unit through a modified servant system. It will look something like this, the variable uh, waterproof regeneration unit which will be connected with the peritoneal dialysis catheter and the pump remote control unit will be there. This will be the disposable kit of sorbents, which will have to uh, reuse and change the cat cartridges. According to the, their study, uh, creatinine and beta-2 microfilling clearance was in the range of 15 to 16 liters per day and net solid clearance was 11.2 liters. Uh, they have showed that YVAC has a, will be an alternative option for the uh, APD and CAPD. Another um, peritoneal based automated variable artificial kidney which was uh, discussed by David BNB and Martin Roberts. It will be, uh, it, it will require no extra cartorial circulation and it will be bloodless. It is designed to continuously regenerate and reuse the dialysis. Sorbent based assembly regenerates both the aqueous and protein component which, is, which was not there in earlier peritoneal dialysis system and it provides, provides a dialysis flow of 96 liters per day and around the clock dialysis and ultra filtration will provide the metabolic steady state and fluid balance regulation. It will look something like this. Uh, it weighs about 2 kg and includes cycler and cartridges. Cycler has a battery life of around 16 hours. Cartridges go, go through 2 liters of the dialysis per hour and uses 9 surgeon batteries. Uh, change the disposable cartridges will be two to three times per week. This is the visual abstract which will be showing that automated variable artificial kidneys will be peritoneal based dialysis and continuous reuse of dialysis will be their solvent based regeneration of aqueous as well as protein component and protein component recycled into the cavity will decrease the protein loss. It is bloodless and waterless. Regeneration rate will be 4 liter per hour. Dialyzed flow will be 96 per liter. And it will provide steady state fluid balance and metabolic regulation. But still, advantage will be lack of immunological and non immunological effects of blood artificial membrane interaction. Tidal exchange will decrease the pain associated with filling and outflow. And less albumin loss due to recycling of the uh, proteins. Enhanced middle molecule toxin removal as compared to conventional peritoneal dialysis, and it, there will be less incidences of peritonitis. But disadvantage will be sorbent cartridge need to replace every 4 to 8 hours. A 
along with the battery and electric replenishment unit. So it will again question the variability. And if the bladder is used as ultrafiltrate filtrate reservoir, so the patient will need to urinate more frequently. And uh, as with the convention, the peritoneal membrane can exhaust. Coming to the third device that is implantable body artificial kidney. Uh, this device is based on the principle of renal assist device which was uh, uh, first uh, given by uh, David Hughes. This device uh, preliminary experience uh, they have done on urinary duct which has compared rats with the sham device placed in extracorporeal continuous hemoperfusion circuit in series with the traditional CRIT hemofilter. The rat treated group showed significant reduction in potassium and urea levels ammonia excretion and glutathione reclamation, increased plasma uh, vitamin D3 level. This was the schematic diagram showing that uh, the RAD filter was used along with the CRRT remote filter. The first FDA approved human clinical trial was done in 10 intensive care unit patients of ACR. Human agents proximal to the epithelial cells obtained from donated kidney which were discarded. Uh, demonstrated device integrity, cell viability, metabolic functionality and immunomodulatory role in these patients with sepsis and multi-organ failure. Although phase 2 uh, study was terminated prematurely because of lack of reliable source and appropriate technology store and use the strategy. Implantable by artificial kidney, uh, this project is in, in collaboration with University of California and San, 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 San Francisco and Vanderbilt University. They have aimed to uh, have a device that can be implanted <coughs> inside the body and perform the normal renal function. IBAC is confluence of silicon nanotechnology and tissue engineering that makes use of micro electromechanical system to decrease the size of the Consists of two parts that is hemocartridge and biocartridge, also known as bioreactor, and it is electrical pump free, runs on the patient's blood pressure. Animal studies for hemocartridge and bioreactors are in progress. It will look like uh, this then. Uh, the blood inflow from the recipient artery that will be drawn by the own blood pressure and it will be a pump free. This hemocartridge is made up of silicon nanopore membrane which will function as a glomerular. And these are biocompatible polymers. So there will be no, uh, no, uh, uh, no clot formation. Bio cartridge is then the blood will flow to bio cartridge or bio reactor, and um, these bio reactors are made up of uh, cultured renal tubular cells on silicon scaffold, which will, which will function as a tubular tubule, renal tubule, and hence the electrolyte and acid base balance will be achieved. So, and the ultrafiltrate will go to the bladder, and the blood will go to the uh, venous system. This will be implanted to the um, kidneys like transplanted kidney and this, these are uh, uh, now US FDA approved and even patented and for the uh, human trials are yet to be used. So to compare VAC, AVAC and uh, implantable uh, attribution kidney, the weight of AVAC peritoneal dialysis will be less than 2 kg, AVAC is less than 5 kg and implantable artificial kidneys are just 500 grams. Uh, they are all battery operated VAC and AVAC, whereas I, uh, implantable artificial kidneys are using the blood pressure as a uh, pumping mechanism. Then fluid requirements are almost less in every, uh, every uh, device. Stage of development that AVAC has uh, started trials in humans, VAC is FDA approved, in, started FDA approved clinical trials and artificial <coughs> and implantable kidneys are still uh, trying in animal model. Limitations of AVAC is they need the frequent exchange of cartridges, whereas in VAC, clotting and bleeding issues will be there, and in implantable artificial kidney may require repeated invasive procedures. Coming to regenerative systems, bio artificial renal epithelial cell system, proximal tubular cells from adult progenitor cells cultured on scaffold of niobium coated carbonates. Uh, these uh, underwent animal testing with favorable metabolic endocrine and immunological parameters. Human trials are also. Another repair and promoting endogenous regeneration systems are 
bone marrow derived medicine kind of stroma cells. They act on renal progenitor stem cells by parenting action and uh, aid in repair of human tubular cells that are damaged. So, mesenchymal cells decreases inflammatory cytokine cycling in the liquid 1 and 6 and they are found to have increased anti-inflammatory cytokine cycling in the liquid 10. Human adipose derived stromal cells, they, they have shown encouraging results in AKI. They are multipotent mesenchymal progenitor cells that functionally and phenotypically resemble pericytes. Compared to mesenchymal stromal cells, they are easier to isolate and highly expandable and hence potentially suitable for clinical translation. Uh, regeneration of kidney in using 3D bioprinting and decellarization of kidney matrix. The concept of 3D bioprinting using the knowledge that complex structure of kidney is derived from 26 different cell types uh, in uretric but and metanectic mesenchyme. Intelligent regeneration has been observed in kidney proximal tissues after injury. Uh, this, uh, even this uh, mechanism has uh, evolved and the scaffold should be able to, but the problem is that the scaffold should be able to withstand blood flow while maintaining its filtration capabilities, durable enough to be handled surgically during implantation, maintaining in vivo integrity and be able to perform secretary and absorptive cap function and con another will be decellularization of kidney which will involve removing all the cellular components which are immunogenic and uh, it will preserve the native structure including matrix such as glycosome and glycan, collagen 1, 5, 4, laminin and fibronectin. It binds with the multiple growth factor and stimulates proliferation after reseeding of the scaffold. Potential sources of kidney for decellularization include human kidneys that are uh, rejected for transplant, post-mortem donation or even animal sources like pig, goat and wood. The challenges for regeneration therapies will be fear of tumoral diseases and immunological issues for stem cells and animal cells, timely manufacture of specific regenerated tissue compatible for those affected. So question is still that the paradigm shift in the RRT and the, the disease center, not the disease center, but the patient centered approach, it will take time, but it has long way to go. So, in conclusion, um, VAC, AVAC, IVAC, and BREAK provides an excitement and hope for the improvement of quality of life, clinical outcome, and the cost associated with ESRD. Despite significant advances, barriers still remain. The devices must prove safe and effective as pre clinical and clinical trials continue. The new therapeutic options will usher a new era in clinical practice in nephrology, with goal being patient-centered, thus improving the outcomes in our ESRD patients.